Hey everybody, something far worse than a recession is coming. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Please make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit that notification bell. Very critical time to be following all the latest economic financial news. These next two months are going to, I think, knock your socks off uh, with what we're going to see here, uh, both financial system wise, economically, uh, and politically, I think we're going to see social unrest. We're going to see a lot of shocking things uh, emerge here in the next few months. Let's start today with this uh, report that layoffs just spiked to one of the worst. The month of August was one of the worst we've seen in many years. In fact, uh, the number of job cuts in August was up 193%. So more than double, almost triple from what we saw in July. And in fact, this was the worst August since 2009, with the exception of 2020. Well, 2020 was worse with, of course, what happened with the shutdowns, the health crisis, but not counting 2020 all the way back to 2009 for the number of layoffs that we saw in August. What did I say here for over a year? I said the second half of 2024 um, was going to be a doozy, folks. And we're just getting it kicked off here. So we still have a long way to go. But please give me a thumbs up if you like what we talk about. If you know, if you've been here, if you heard me, you know, make this prediction here. Uh, with the exclusion of 2020, last month, August was the, the job or the month with the most job cuts since 2009 with 76,456 layoffs announced. Um, folks, this is massive. Overall this year, 536,000 job cuts have been announced. Um, that's... Uh, you know, actually shocking to some people, but if you've been following the trends, then uh, you're, you're probably not even surprised right now here in this. And of course, you know what's going to happen. It's going to get uh, worse. So think about it. The worst since two, 2020. So we're in a pandemic time frame period of the economy right now with the number of layoffs. If you just look at the um, how bad it was in August, right? So we're at the point now where we were in the in the middle of the health crisis, <laughs> right? It just came out with the health crisis emerged in March 2020, uh, and we're comparing this to August 2020. So yeah, so keep uh, your seatbelts fastened, folks, because it's going to get pretty wild. Now we got a lot to get into today. We're going to talk about inflation. Uh, big August jobs report is going to be coming out here today, later today. I'm putting this video out earlier on Friday. I may have to do a second video. Or I may just talk about it in a Saturday video, but definitely need to follow up with this video with that. August jobs report is going to be pivotal uh, to factor the size of the Fed's coming rate cut. Remember, a lot of people said, no, they would never cut rates because inflation's still too high. Uh, inflation's still high, folks, and the price levels haven't come down, and they're still talking about cutting rates. That should show you that there's big, big problems going on. Uh, I say behind the scenes. It's not behind the scenes for viewers of this channel, but for most, I'd say 99% of 99.9% .9 of the population, people have no idea what's going on. Uh, people were duped into thinking that inflation was temporary or transitory for years. So people kept spending money. They said, okay, better, better times are around the corner <laughs> or over the hill. People kept spending money uh, only to find out a few years later that inflation didn't come down. Things did not normalize. In fact, Things continue to get more expensive with the exception, exception of a couple things. Automobile prices down year over year. Uh, what else do we have down? We have um, rents down on average, but there are some cities still uh, up year over year on rents, especially the cities that still have these uh, eviction moratoriums. Um, so that's you know a big thing there. But let's go ahead and get into the next bit of news here. Let's talk about what's happening with some military families. Now, people think of the military as very well paid. I've got a buddy that actually retired in his late 40s after doing 20 years um, in the military. And he's he's not working, not even working a side hustle or gig economy job. He's fully retired. Look at this report right here, Military Times. Inflation has some military families grasping at pennies. So think about this. You serve your country and you think you're going to get paid well and you're grasping at pennies here. Uh, what does it say here? Quote, literally, this is what they said out of the article, literally turning a trip to McDonald's into a big event. Um, and this is his family, this guy talking about his family's trip to McDonald's. 
a trip to McDonald's for my wife and one-year-old daughter, and himself, of course, close to $40. That's just one meal. For two six-inch subs, two drinks, it costs $20. He's talking about Subway or McDonald's. Wow, uh, <laughs> $40 for a couple and a one-year-old kid. I'd like to know what they bought uh, for $40. I know some of the milkshakes, I think I got one a few years ago, uh, before I found out it wasn't actually real milk or you know milk in there. Um, it was like almost $5, I think, for a shake. So yeah, I could believe that um, this couple and their one-year-old kid had a $40 bill. It does seem kind of like a lot, though, doesn't it, for, for three people and one of the kids or one of the three is a one-year-old kid. <laughs> to me, that seems like a lot, but I haven't went to McDonald's in a few years. So uh, is that a lot? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, moving on here, let's talk about what's happening in some other countries. In this case, countries much worse off than the U.S., Argentina. The inflation forecast over in Argentina cut to 123%. <laughs> uh, it was up just uh, in the last month. It was up another nearly 4%, and it's coming in at an annualized rate of 123%. Now, we talked about this, I think, a year or two ago, how the extreme weather and crops getting wiped out were going to be uh, a factor in inflation. And Argentina, if you go back here to this uh, report and many others like this, this came out, what, a March 2023. Argentina's unprecedented drought pummels farmers and the economy. So major food shortages there causing food prices to spike. That's just part of the overall inflation. They're still printing a lot of money there, just like most countries are doing, borrowing slash printing, and that's created an inflation nightmare. Imagine 123% inflation, folks. You can't spend your money fast enough when prices are going up that quickly, right? Saving money is basically a sin when that's happening because you're saving your money and it's just losing value literally overnight. So you better go buy whatever you can now, spend all your money right away in Argentina. Otherwise, whatever you wanted to buy or were going to buy that you didn't buy, it's going to be more expensive literally the very next day. Um, insane, folks. So this is what some countries are going through. And it's not just here um, in Argentina. There's many other countries going through this right now. And uh, the United States, we still have the luxury of the world reserve currency, even though there's countries out there trying to ditch the dollar. Um, right now, we actually should be pretty happy about what inflation is, even though it's causing a lot of people uh, major struggles. Most people, again, living paycheck to paycheck, military families struggling, uh, food banks running out of food. We talked about that, what, uh, maybe three or four reports ago. Uh, record amounts of food banks struggling right now because of all the people coming in uh, to get the free food. Uh, so is that a sign of a strong economy? I mean, let me know what you think when food banks are running out of food, I would think that would be just the opposite, a sign of a struggling economy. But I guess a lot of people will just look at the stock market and they'll say, no, the economy's strong. Uh, look at the stock market, even though it's mostly the billionaires and the top 10%, uh, that own just about all the stocks, 90% of the stocks. And, uh, folks, it's getting so bad that, uh, even the dollar stores are struggling. We had the 99 cent store go out of business here in California. And I think they're in many other states. Uh, but again, it's global. It's not just the United States. Uh, look at this right here. Corporate bankruptcies are on the rise globally. Uh, so again, not a U.S. problem. Whatever's going to happen in November, whoever wins, it's not going to fix anything. It's not going to change anything. Um, there'll be a few things that are changed, but the overall, overall trajectory here is still uh, into the, uh, I think, into the darkness. And I think recession is just going to be uh, what people d would be a dream for people when we see what's going to happen here. It's far worse than a recession than what we've got coming here. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking and some of you are probably typing right now in comments, JJ, you've been talking about this for years. Nothing ever happens. Folks, it's already happening. Just because it hasn't happened to you yet doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. But if you ask about half the country right now, people living paycheck to paycheck, even military families, uh, ask the people that are going to food banks every month to get food and the reason why the food banks are seeing shortages. If you ask half the country now, it's already happening. Not it will happen or it's on the doorstep or it's it's coming right next month, next week. It's here. And in fact, for many people, it's been here for a year, two years, three, even more. Uh, so you have to wake up and see that you know, what's happening to you might not be the majority. And I hope you are doing well. I hope you're doing better than ever. Um, 
you know, able to pay things off, relax, maybe retire at four, late 40s, like a good friend of mine. Um, but maybe he came out of retirement. I haven't talked to him in a couple of years. He lives on the East Coast. I'm over here in California. So things can change quickly. You can be retired and thinking, okay, I'm set. I don't need to work anymore. Then all of a sudden your HOA tells you that you need a new roof and that you better do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to get a bunch of fees from your friendly homeowners association. So I, I say that because my sister, she bought a home in an HOA complex. And I know many people watching this probably have HOAs. And I hope your HOA is not uh, ripping you off completely. But uh, she said that her HOA told her that she had to get a new roof. And the quotes that she got were between fifteen dollars and $18,000. So she's going to have to take out some sort of balance transfer or loan or equity line of credit. She, she doesn't have the money, basically. So she's going to have to go deeper in debt to get the new roof that the HOA is mandating. And by the way, the same HOA is raising her HOA fee every year by a lot. Uh, what what her um, HOA fees are being increased by uh, outpaces the official inflation number. It's more than the three something percent or two point nine percent that we've been seeing here as far as the year over year inflation number. Anyway, I, I mentioned that because I read an article earlier about what's happening down in Florida. Flor Floridians uh, are getting blasted with rising HOA costs. The HOAs are saying, well, it's for the common areas, the maintenance because of all the you know, the storms, the hurricanes, uh, these people are paying in some cases thousand plus dollars a month for an HOA fee folks. It's like a, a second mortgage. It's, it's outrageous. Uh, let's talk about the housing. Um, I would say housing shortage. Uh, there's a lot of houses out there, but they're not on the market because a lot of them are being bought up by mega corporations and investment firms. And here's one here. Uh, this made world news here. San Diego, my hometown here. I'm on the outskirts. I'm in a suburb here. I'm in a place called La Mesa, but suburb of San Diego. We still say uh, we still say San Diego. Uh, national news here. Molten international news. International Business Times. Blackstone hiked rent prices at double the market rate in San Diego. Allegedly uses RealPage's rent fixing software. So for those of you that didn't see that report, or maybe two reports, I talked about it. There's a software that. Big investors, corporations are using to set rental prices, and there's some legal implications here. They're going after these companies for using the software. They're actually going after the software developer, which I don't think is right because just because you develop software doesn't mean that your intention is to have people or have landlords in this case or Black Blackstone have to have them raise rents uh, this severely. But anyways, they're going after them. But there's this software out there that says, okay, this is how much you can get uh, for rent. This is the maximum you can get. And of course, they're a company. They're in it for the profits. They're going to raise their rents as much as possible, right? They want to raise them just enough to where people can barely scrape by and still pay the rent, but not too much to where people are just going to default and move out and they have to get new renters and then rent their musical chairs. I'm sure they don't mind kicking people out, but they don't want people, you know, massive, a massive amount of people at once. Uh, not paying the rent because that would be a lot at once. Like imagine a million tenants quit paying the rent all at once. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of um, finding new tenants at once. Uh, Blackstone hiked rent prices at double the market rate here in San Diego. Uh, Blackstone, the largest alternative asset manager in the world with over $1 trillion, trillion with a T, uh, of assets under management. The recent Helter Skelter, How Blackstone Contributes and Profits from California's Broken Housing System. Uh, folks, it's not really broken. If you would just stop these mega companies from buying the homes, rents would crash. Rents would come down, uh, I would say, by at least 50%. If just that one thing, just stopping investors from buying homes. right? It's um, close to one in two homes in, in certain cities that are bought by investors here in California. Now, nationwide, on average, it's about one in six homes. I bought by investors, uh, including a lot of these big companies. So uh, what do you think about it? I think it should be illegal. They could change the law at the stroke of a pen uh, if they really wanted rents to come down. But I don't think they do. I think they want people living paycheck to paycheck. They want people dependent on a handout. They want people having to go to food banks because people that are desperate and, uh, and begging for help are, are more easily controlled, in my opinion. <laughs> so uh, am I wrong? Please let me know. Does this make sense? This is what I see out of this here. All right, let's shift gears a little bit here. Bad 
economic data continues to pour in here out of payments. FDIC says savings declined. We talked about that a few reports ago with the savings rate dropping again. Uh, Charge-offs increased. We reported on that. And problem banks inched up in the second quarter. Does this sound like an economic recovery? Remember coming out of 2020, what did we hear for like two years? We heard economic recovery, economic recovery. When we knew what was really happening here, we knew that it was a debt binge. First, they everybody spent their stimulus checks. Everything looked good. Prices shot up for everything, pretty much. Um, everybody said the economy strong. Look at all the spending. The consumer's strong. Look what's happening, folks. FDIC is admitting problem banks, charge-offs increase, uh, the savings rate decline for consumers here. Um, the FDIC latest quarterly assessment. The report revealed trends that bear watching, particularly as domestic deposits declined, reversing a generational growth trend. Well, it's been reversing for over a year now. Credit card charge-offs up. We talked about that a couple reports ago. And the list of problem banks grew. Well, here's the thing. If, if banks actually had to have the money in the vaults, so to speak, uh, the money that they loaned out, that they actually had to have it in the vaults, all of the banks are problem banks, every single one of them. And they would all be basically bankrupt. And that sounds weird saying that, that a bank can be bankrupt. But that's what's happening. What they're doing now is loaning out many, many more times the amount of money than they actually have. And you say, well, how is that possible? It's because it's not real money. It's just digits on a screen, right? When you got a mortgage, did they start counting out $100 bills? Here's your mortgage. We're going to give you uh, $400,000 and $100 bills. And they're sitting there counting it out in $100 bills for maybe two hours. Of course not. It's all digital, folks. It's just digits on a screen. It's just electronic funds transfer, uh, digits on the screen. It's not even money they have uh, in the vaults, not even paper money in the vaults. It's even worse than having a fiat currency. It's uh, Fiat currency is actually mild uh, compared to what's actually happening right now in the banking system. So uh, insane, folks. That's why I keep saying stack, uh, keep stacking. Precious metals, silver, silver is going to be, um, when this whole thing fails, and it will, we don't know when, we don't know exactly how, but the, the writing's on the wall, the signs are right in front of us here. Ultimately, it's going to fail. All fiat currencies fail at some point. Um, silver, silver is going to be part of the monetary system. I think gold as well. And I think even copper, right? So I hold all of those. Uh, certain cryptos, I hold XRP. I think there's going to be a, a payment system utilizing uh, the XRP a blockchain, and I think we're going to see that uh, announced out of the BRICS nations here very soon. I talked about XRP, what, four years ago? Um, that's something else I hold. And, uh, you know, just got to prepare for this. And uh, there's a reason why central banks are stacking precious metal. Why do we see record amounts of precious metal purchases each year out of these central banks? Multiple central banks across the globe stacking precious metals, not paper, right? If paper was the future, um, it seems like they would just be stacking pallets of paper. And if they can print it, they can just stack it themselves. So why wouldn't they do that if it uh, was the best way to hedge against what's ahead of us here? So of course, it's a no-brainer, folks. So uh, keep stacking, everybody. Hope you guys like this report. Um, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Oh, one more thing here. Rite Aid just emerged from their Chapter 11 bankruptcy. I just thought of this because I drove by one earlier that was uh, closed or closing. Rite Aid emerges from Chapter 11 bankruptcy after closing. Wow, 131 stores. A relative of mine just got back from a trip to Michigan. And she said a lot of the old Rite Aid stores that she used to go to uh, are closed. And this was like um, Southwest Michigan area, Kalamazoo, um, around that area, Kalamazoo. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other cities. It's been like 20 years um saint joseph on the shore south haven places like that anyways hope you guys like this report please make sure again you are subscribed stay ahead of the financial economic curve come back to this channel hit that notification bell it's going to get wild folks but you're going to be ready i'm going to be ready uh we're going to be on top of this and we're going to keep an eye on for investment opportunities too i've got a couple uh stocks that i'm thinking about shorting uh for those of you that followed me on my other trades recently we bet against nvidia we bet against um rivian the car company electric car company and uh very nice trades because those stocks went down um bought them right at the right time or went against them right at the right time so i've got a couple others on the watch list please make sure you come back and i'll fill you in on those um 
very soon here. Keep stacking, everybody. Bye for now. Peace.